Well, you didn't have to live in Missouri in 2009 to remember the Missouri 500. It was and still is one of the largest dog fighting busts in U.S. history, spanning seven states. 26 people were arrested in the undercover operation that saved at least 500 dogs. More than 100 had to be put down from their injuries. Live on your side was there when some of the ringleaders appeared in court back then. Of those arrested, four Missouri men were sentenced to one year and a day in prison after pleading guilty to federal animal fighting laws. Now the details of that bust are disturbing, infuriating if you're an animal lover. And what's worse, it's still going on everywhere. And no one knows that better than the photographer who tags along with the Humane Society of Missouri when they break up these dog fighting rings. He was there 10 years ago for the Missouri 500 bust, and he continues to share these stories today. It's also put an end to this culture of animal cruelty. Dog fighting is everywhere. I've been to the middle of uh, nowhere in Missouri in a snowstorm. Photography has been Mike Bazzelli's passion for 47 years. What are you doing, buddy? He would take pictures of everything. But 10 years ago, his focus changed. I photographed and documented the first uh, dogfight bus was the largest in U.S. history, and that was the Missouri 500. And on the eve of that uh, trip, I was a little, uh, a little anxious, and it is a little unnerving when about 20 or 30 pit bulls come out of their enclosures dragging their chains. Bazzelli thought he was there to photograph monsters, and he was sure he'd found one when he locked eyes with Faye. It was still pretty early in the morning, it was still pretty dark out, but in this uh, plywood box, I saw this dog, it was a black dog, and all I could see was teeth. And I called over to Tim Rickey, who was in charge of the operation, and I said, Tim, watch out, man, here's a mean one, she's showing me nothing but teeth. And Tim came up, and he went right up to her, and he knelt down, and he embraced her, and he said, she's not mean, she's had her lips cut off. This is Faye. Oh, God. And it was pitiful, isn't it? That first bust was eye-opening for Bazzelli. There are thousands of dog fighters in this country, and that means there are tens of thousands of dogs on chains like that. His pictures and experiences are now part of a photo documentary called Last Day on a Chain. I hope it sheds light and, and dispels this myth that these dogs are monsters, they're not. It follows these dogs from their rescue to their rehab, and for many, their second chance at life. Todd and Amy Rebick adopted two pit bulls who came from dog fighting situations. 12-year-old Ellie. We believe she was just used for breeding. And 10-year-old Carl. He was more of a case of a city street fighting situation and, and chained up in a yard. Fortunately, the right people showed up at the right time and got him out of there. For every success story like this one, there's many more dogs still on chains. It's big money. A grand champion is a winner of five fights and its offspring will be worth thousands of dollars. What is it going to take to put an end to this dog fighting? Uh, it's up to prosecutors and uh, uh, judges to inflict maximum day, uh, prison time and fines for these people. It's just a cruel, cruel adventure. Mm, it is. It's so heartbreaking. And this is the book, guys. It's called Last Day on a Chain. The good news is they reached their goal on the Kickstarter campaign. So now he will be able to publish this and hopefully sell a lot of copies, spread the message, and put an end to this because I just yeah. can't believe it. It's going on. Well, as you can see from the dogs that were adopted, yeah. these aren't bad animals. No. It's yeah. bad training that led them to have the behavior that they mm -hmm. had. So, you know, the, the whole pit bull thing, you know, allow these dogs to be good dogs. Yeah. They can do that. 